Welcome to Farming for Health, where Farmer Lee Jones and I talk with leaders in food, farming, and health and wellness to spread knowledge and inspire a plant-forward future, starting now. Welcome to the Farming for Health podcast. I'm Dr. Amy Sapola, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Jason Wayne. Welcome, Jason. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Amy. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So first, I just wanted to start off with your journey to the culinary industry. How did you get involved in this field, and kind of where are you at now? Yeah. I well, I was sort of born into it. I was. I'm third generation food service professional. So my grandfather back a long time ago was selling flatware and plates and spoons and knives and forks all around the country. And then my dad got into food service. He was a distributor in Pennsylvania for a while and then in Miami and then ultimately started a manufacturer's rep firm in Denver back in the early 80s. And um, and then I so I was sort of born into it. I was putting away flatware and polishing kettles when I was eight. And uh, but then my own journey took me to become a history teacher. Actually, I became a social studies teacher, so history and government and geography for eight years before deciding to, to try it. And I joined my dad's rep firm back in 2008, and I've been here ever since. Oh, that's amazing. And yeah. so what led you to start the Food Service Plant Power Network? I know I've been hearing a lot about it, and I'm excited to learn more. So the Food Service Power Plant Network was born during COVID, actually. I was, um, you know, I had joined my dad's manufacturer's rep firm, and that really is selling the supplies and equipment. So so on the farm, and Chef Jamie, he's cooking all day long, right? And he's cooking on equipment and plating on plates and all of that stuff. That's what I sold. It wasn't the food side. It was more the supplies and equipment side. And I had a rep firm. I ended up buying with some partners my dad's rep firm and ran that for 12 years. And then I was transitioning roles. We'd had some pretty significant health stuff happen in our family. And I needed to move from uh, just kind of starting something new, something that would allow me a little bit better boundaries. And um, turns out the date we had picked, like nine months prior was March 20th, 2020. That was the date we had picked. Well, none of us saw COVID coming. And um, the new role that I had, had lined up with Cal Mill, which is where I'm at now, I uh, it got postponed. So I was unemployed for about 10 weeks. And I don't do well just sitting, really. I get bored quite easy, and I don't love boredom. And um, so I started offering positive mindset tools to the industry. I had spent a significant part of my 20s dealing with depression and anxiety. And coming out of that, I had learned a lot of positive mindset tools to, that really changed my life around. It took me from a place of fear to a place of kind of a willingness to take risks and try new things and connect in new ways. And so, uh, and I'd studied that for 15 years. That became kind of my hobby. When most of my friends were out golfing or on guys weekends, things like that, I was more than likely at a professional development conference or personal development conference. So when COVID hit, I just started doing these videos about five minutes in length. And I threw them on LinkedIn and I emailed them to former customers to say, hey, listen, I know everybody's afraid right now, but maybe this will help. And the first one was on laughter and what, you know, laughter releases endorphins and it gives us a better kind of outlook, the way to look at things. And then I just kept going on vision and on connection and all these different things, power of words. And um, so I did that about 40 of those. And not long after that, I was talking to a friend. She was living in a high rise in Chicago. She was in food service too. And she said, I'm so lonely. You know, in our industry, we're used to being out there and being with people and going to conferences and shows and things like that. And she said, you know, I can't even go see my parents right now. Everybody's so afraid and I'm just alone. So that's when the Food Service Power Plant Network was born, which is a Facebook group. And we've got a few thousand people in it. And um, it was really a way to connect us because people were isolated. You know, in my own journey of health, community has played such a significant role. And um, so that was a way to sort of give us a sense of community to, to be together in this hard time. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And what a way to be there for people and to pull in your skills and really form something amazing. And so you formed this community and found that community was really important. And you talked about kind of that mindset um, and empowerment. What are some of the tools um, that you bring in to help people like with this area? 
Well, it's a great question. There's, it's kind of based on the power plant network is based on three ideas. One is community, which we talked about. Two is tools, and three is the power of story. Um, you know, I'm a big believer that, you know, I can learn a whole bunch of tools to change me, to offer me guidance in new direction. But oftentimes, I need a real story of someone who's lived it. And so we interview industry leaders. So Farmer Lee came on and Chef Jamie and Morgan uh, Tucker came on and we interview people, industry leaders to get them to share their story, not so much the successes or the professional side, more about the personal side, the human side. So they can say, here's a challenge that we went through and I didn't know I was gonna get out of it, but we did, or here's what I learned to sort of offer hope. Now, I'm gonna pull something out of my drawer. I'm sitting here at my desk as I talk to you. And so I literally have a laminated sheet here of like a whole bunch of tools that I learned over the years that I can remember in tough times. Maybe it's the power of words and using words that are powerful as opposed to I should or I couldn't or I can't or it's I won't or um, I, I can, you know, changing power words or whether it's visualizing, understanding the power of visualization to create an exciting future that we want, you know, being able to close my eyes. I, I remember watching years ago, Lindsey Vaughn, it was during the Winter Olympics and she was at the top of the mountain and she was kind of crouched down and going through all her motions, but, and she was visualizing the course. She was preparing herself to run this race. And so oftentimes we can prepare ourselves to run a race that excites us. So visualization or the power of affirmations, you know, sort of stating, declaring with words where we want to be. Um, and owning that in the now, or maybe it's um, understanding purpose and our why. There's this great quote, you know, people don't give up because of how hard they're working, they forget why they're working so hard. And so understanding how purpose and why play such a big role in our lives. So I, I mean, I've got a list of like 70 on the sheet, I won't go through them all with you, but um, things like that. Yeah, oh, that's great. And how do you think as far as like, um, the restaurant industry? What are the tools or the things that happen to like resonate the most with professionals in the restaurant industry? And also like, how do you start to approach self-care with people who are really giving so much to others and spending a lot of time, you know, doing and giving outwardly? A message from our sponsor. The Chef's Garden is a family-owned regenerative farm that grows the most flavorful and nutritious vegetables, herbs, and microgreens for culinary professionals and home cooks. For over 30 years, the Chef's Garden has supplied some of the world's finest chefs and restaurants. Now, through Farmer Jones Farm, the same delicious ingredients are available to home cooks in the United States to use and enjoy, delivered directly to their homes. The Chef's Garden mission is to grow exceptional vegetables, care for each other in the land, and to inspire a vegetable forward future. For more information, visit chefs-garden.com. It's a great question. And I think it's why it's so important. You know, it's um, in hospitality, caring for others. I did this, I, I asked our community, this is probably two years ago, like what makes the hospitality special, personal, like, what makes a hospitality professional so unique? And the conclusion that our community came to is the ability to take care of others really well. We take care of others. We help people's dreams come true, et cetera. And if that's our superpower, oftentimes our Achilles heel is really knowing how to do that for ourselves. And so, um, and we feed off taking care of others. It's wonderful. It's a gift. We love it. It feeds us. But oftentimes we forget to take that time really to refill our tank and understanding even what fills us up, what does self-care look like for us? So, you know, for some people it might be a walk outside, for some people it might be exercise, it might be connecting with others, um, breathing exercises, uh, meditation, all of these things. So I think for our community, more than most, it is integral to our ability to sustain what we love. I think if we want to be in it for the long haul and not just be in hospitality, but enjoy the experience and to be in something that really makes us come alive, we've got to have those foundational tools to know how to care for ourselves so that we can stay, sustain caring for others and really let the caring for others be life-giving to us. There's a point if we're not taking care of ourselves, and I'm, all I'm doing is taking care of others, ultimately I hit a wall. And um, it stops giving life and it starts taking life from me. And so um, it's kind of balancing the two. Yeah, I think that's so important, especially in these days, to think about 
how do you give back to yourself? We talk about that in agriculture, right? Like we're a regenerative farm and we're giving back to the soil and building the soil so that it can nourish us. And so applying those principles to your own self-care, I think sometimes even just putting some definition to like, what does self-care mean to me, right? Like it's it can be different for each person, but in some ways I like to think of like nourishing, like how do I nourish myself? It's not just food, right? But like, what are the other ways that I like take time to nourish my body or my mind or whatever? Um, and so as far as like making time, the time for all of this, what, what do you talk with people about? Like, um, because I know one of the first things I hear often is I don't have time for that, <laughs> right? Like I don't have time for self care. Well, a couple things, Um, you know, you talk about regenerative farming. I I actually, so I'm giving a talk this Friday. I'm going to be, give a keynote down in Orlando to a group of a few hundred people. And Farmer Lee is in my message. And um, everything you're doing, regenerative farming, there's this idea of sustainable, you know, he talks about sustainable is kind of just getting by. We don't want to just sustain it. We wanted to farm in a way that was that brought life to the soil and to the vegetables and was left, you know, the soil better than when we found it. And I think about that with our mental health and self-care too. Like there's this element of, we want to be able to sustain the work we're doing. Like we want to be able to do it in a healthy way and healthy is good, but what if we could live lives from a self-care, mental health, emotional health perspective that going through this journey in hospitality, we came out more alive. We didn't just make it because not everybody even makes it, you know, they burn out or they find something different or we don't want to just make it, but we want it to really make us come alive and the people that are around us. And for us, I will say in my life, um, usually I find time when I hit a wall. There's uh, a wall I hit or uh, my wife says, Jason, like, you know, you're working so much. Um, what does it look like to be more engaged or what does it look like? Or for me, I experience a burnout moment and I'm like, you know what? I can't keep going at this pace at this rate. And usually life hits and I make changes to find time. Um, I now, I didn't used to, I used to start my days answering emails, literally in bed. I would pick the phone up off my nightstand and I felt so burdened by emails. I would just be answering in my bed. I don't start my days those ways anymore. Now it starts by getting outside in the first 15 minutes when I wake up to get some sun in my eyes and uh, to see the light to get me going. Um, And then with some breathing, whether it's some Wim Hof breathing or whether I'll do some breathing, I use the insight timer app. So I do that and there's meditation and all these different breathing exercises. I'll do some of that. I've got a gratitude journal, which is uh, right here on my desk right here. So I'll do five things I'm grateful for. So I start my day remembering what's good. But again, that wasn't always my experience. Um, I just wanted to go, go, go. And I wanted to try to keep up and take care of everyone else until I couldn't take care of anyone else because I couldn't take care of me. And so you change habits and routines in the hopes that I experience life in a more fulfilling way. And so do the people around me. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's just starting that one thing. Like, you know, you name multiple things you're doing for your daily self-care. And sometimes it's just like, that starting that first couple of minutes even you know just waking up and thinking of something you're grateful for and then it kind of snowballs where then you're like oh and then i'll do this and then i'll do this and it feels it generally feels pretty good right and so kind of builds um but sometimes can be overwhelming at first i think if you're like if you have a whole list of things that you feel like you have to do or should do and maybe we should talk about that too yeah because you talked about the power of words and the mm-hmm. shoulds and all of that can you speak to when it comes to self-care how do you get how do you change that mindset and the words from the shoulds to actually doing and not feeling the obligation but feeling like the desire I remember hearing a gentleman years ago, this is probably 20 years ago, there was a guy that I listened to named Brennan Manning. He was a speaker and he said, I will not should on myself. And um, should is one of those words that just kills energy. It kills momentum. Anytime we think we should do something, it's, it's, um, it speaks to law. It doesn't speak to life. And so for us, anytime I hear myself saying should, sometimes I still do, don't get me wrong, Sometimes my wife will correct me and be like, Jason, nope, don't put that on yourself. Um, Remember, it's for doing that, which is life-giving. And those things I mentioned this morning that I do, 
aren't because I think I should. Um, they're usually things that start me in a place of calm. I found out what brings life. I found out what centers me. I found out what helps me approach the day from a, um, a centered perspective and do those things because I found out they worked. There are some things my friends do that if they don't work for me, I don't stick with them very long. One time, I, I think there's a book out there about like trying everything for 30 days. Just try something just for 30 days. And if it doesn't work, let go of it and try something new. Um, and so these are things which over time historically have just worked for me to kind of um, take care of me and make sure that I can therefore take care of others. Yeah, I love that mindset. I, I talk with clients a lot about like uh, having kind of an experimental mindset where instead of you either succeed or you fail, we're testing it out. We're experimenting. And like you said, try it out for, you know, 30 days or whatever time period works for you. And then if it doesn't work, let it go. Um, and if it does, hey, keep it. <laughs> but I think that's a really great way to do it. And also takes the burden off because sometimes we're carrying around so many shoulds that mm -hmm. it gets heavy. Um, so when it comes to nourishing yourself um, and you kind of mentioned a few things that you're doing. Um, how do you bring that into your life? What do you do for yourself besides kind of your morning routine to support your mental health? Um, you know, I think one is something I've been working on a lot is just paying attention. Um, I'm someone who can deal with anxiety. I, I can live in a place of fight or flight oftentimes. And so, and oftentimes you can feel that in your body before you even know why, why you're feeling anxious. So one thing is paying attention, paying attention to where I'm at, if I'm feeling anxious. And then if I, when I recognize it, leaning into some of those tools in the moment, if I can sneak away from what I'm doing, if I could step away from the emails or if I'm at a show working with clients and I can go for just a quick walk to do a little breathing or to connect with someone I trust, um, it's paying attention and having those tools kind of in my toolkit at the ready that I can sort of engage with at any moment. Um, it really is a, a minute by minute and hour by hour thing. Um, you know, there's times where I'm drinking tea at night before bed to call me and some nights I'm doing okay. And it's like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm good to go to bed. It's all right. Um, or sometimes if I feel that I can use some of those things, whether it's a hot shower or whether it's, um, a meditation at night to help calm me down, et cetera, put me in a place ready for rest, all of those things. I really more, I think it starts with paying attention and then moving from there. Yeah. So when it comes to kids and working with schools, can you talk about your K-12 power plant program? Yeah. So we've got, um, me and, and one of my friends and colleagues, Shannon Solomon, she is the director of nutrition services at Aurora Public Schools out here in Colorado. She and her team fed during COVID 8 million free meals wow. to their students and families in need. Yep. She was this year's operator of the year by FES Magazine. She's just an amazing human. And um, I started my career in schools, of course, the first eight years. And so it's a way to, there can be this belief. I actually spoke, this was 2019. I went and I spoke to Shannon's school district and it, they were getting ready to begin the, the year. And, um, and, and there was a assistant superintendent who came in who said something like, Hey, we want to thank you all for being here. We just want you to know how important you are. I know you're not a teacher or an administrator, but we want you to know you're important. And I was like, Oh man, I don't know that that message got across that way. And so it was to say to school, you know, these, as Shannon calls them, lunch ladies and lunch lads, um, you know, food is the great connector. Food is the thing that we, um, anytime we celebrate, we make celebrations better. Let's say it's a wedding or an anniversary or a bar mitzvah or whatever. We do it over food. If we're in a position of mourning or grieving, um, a funeral or a loss or something like that, we have food there to help us through that process. Anytime we have conflict with a friend and we need to come back together, usually it's by saying, hey, you want to go grab a cup of coffee? or you want to grab a drink or should we, can we go share a meal to reconnect over food? And the cafeteria is the place in schools where the food is. And so it's an offering for people to be in kind of the best place possible for them, the most life-giving, the place that we do all of these things. And so I wanted these lunch ladies and lunch lads to know that power they had and the, how meaningful their role was in the school. 
So, um, so Shannon helps run that for us and she does speaking around the country, working with school districts, helping them inspire their teams to know just how much they matter and giving them tools and a framework uh, to come together and offer that to their students. Wow. And so is that based on more like the mindset and philosophy and the environment that's created or the actual like food that's served and how it's served? Farming for Health is brought to you by Farmer Jones Farm at the Chef's Garden. Farmer Jones Farm provides nutritious, regeneratively grown vegetables to home cooks nationwide. If you are searching for vegetables grown in a way that's healthy for you and good for the planet, try a curated box from Farmer Jones Farm. Get 15% off your order with code FARMINGFORHEALTH15. It's more about the philosophy. So there's this idea both in the Food Service Power Plant Network and the K-12 Power Plant Network. It's a lot of mindset tools. And the idea is that um, our growth as people, as humans, the steps we take are a lot like the steps that a chef takes when creating a meal that they're really excited about or the meal of their dreams. I'll try to go through them really quickly for you. So like first, like a chef needs to know, what do I want to make? What gets me excited? Is it grandma's lasagna with a twist? Is it prime rib? Is it um, whatever that is? And same with us in our life, when we want to create energy and health, we've got to know what we want. We've got to have direction, have something that inspires us, that excites us and know where we're going. The second thing a chef needs to do is they need to take total ownership of that meal. If it comes out uh, wonderful, then it's on them. If it comes out a little too cold, then it's on them. For us, it's all about taking ownership and responsibility, not blaming, not complaining, not putting our lack of um, achievement on others or our lack of well-being or our lack of mental health on our family story or the society, whatever that is, just owning it because in owning it, there's power. Uh, next, a chef needs to sharpen their tools. And for us in mindset tools, it's all about goal setting and visualization and affirmations and things like that. So learning those tools as we wanna move forward. Next, a chef has to decide who's cooking in their kitchen with them, who's gonna be on their team. And you, know, you and I talked earlier about the power of community. The people we surround ourselves with play such an instrumental role in who we become. You know, if I hang out with people that uh, that love to eat well and eat, eat re uh, regenerative vegetables, then chances are I'll do that too. Um, I live in, you know, just outside of Boulder, Colorado, where there's like a million triathletes every time I drive down the road. And so I became a triathlete years ago. And, you know, I go through things like that because those are the people that are around me. Next, a chef needs to uh, get the best ingredients. And, and for us, that's all about mindset tools. It's all about things that release endorphins and serotonin and dopamine, like going for walks or laughing or, um, you know, uh, cuddling puppies, which releases serotonin, things like that. Um, after that, a chef needs to cook. They need to start chopping, sauteing, making it happen. And for us, it's about taking action in our lives. So you can't just hope and dream and want, but never take a step in that direction. We've got to call people and ask for help. We need to start typing the manuscript. We need to plant the farm, whatever that is. And then lastly, the chef needs to taste it, find out if it's good, and then they make it better. They add a little salt, or they add some Cholula or something like this. And for us, it's all about getting feedback in our journeys, asking someone, how am I doing? How does this look? And then always improving, not letting failure stop us, realizing that failure is just learning. It's just growth and trying something new. So it's implementing those tools, that mindset into schools. And then the food service power plant network, of course, it's putting this mindset and these tools and these steps into food service professionals. Wow. So can you give me an example of like a place that you've implemented this and like what that looks like in practice? Yeah. So I'll go, I went and I met with a company in Southern California and I went and I did a half day workshop with them, teaching them these tools so that they could dream together and then have these steps to move forward. And then the cool thing is when a team does this together, they take risks by sharing things. So I'll give you an example. Someone wanted to uh, pay off. I went into this company and there was a gentleman, I think he's probably 40-ish. And one of his things was he wanted to pay off his student loans. And there was another woman who wanted to buy her first house. And um, when they share these things, it's amazing what happens. You take, you know, I have this belief that relationship is the result of surviving a risk with someone with another person. And when you share your dreams, you're taking a risk with your colleagues. And inevitably that brings you closer together. It creates stronger bonds. But then also 
it lets someone else know what you're looking for. So the woman who wants the house, there might be another person in the room that says, hey, my sister's a realtor. So you're looking for a house, like maybe we can help you. But the gentleman that wanted to pay off the student loans, his boss heard that, the owner of the company that brought me in. And he said, man, I didn't realize you still had student debt. He goes, I want to help you get there. He goes, let's some, set some targets for you. And if you hit those targets, let's set them. They'll be achievable. We'll set them together. But when you hit them, I'm going to help contribute to you paying off your student loans. So um, whether it's workshops or I go and do keynote speeches for teams to kind of offer some motivation, some tools, a place of authenticity and vulnerability for people to be real. I'm I'm willing to be real with my experience and my mental health journey and all the things I had to learn to come to a place of health, then that sort of opens up the door for people to do the same. That's fantastic. So when we talk about um, the podcast, I always like to ask, what is one meal that's inspiring you right now that's a plant forward meal that maybe you're making at home or you've recently had out? What's one meal that you're, comes to mind? A meal that comes to mind, plant forward meal. Um, my wife does a lot of our cooking. She has for years and she has, so we are planting our garden right now. So um, we will use all through the summer, the tomatoes and through the fall, um, cilantro, we'll put cilantro on everything. We love tacos, like little street tacos. So cilantro goes on everything. Um, last night was um, some chicken noodle soup with a lot of carrots and onions and celery and things like that. So all, all those things. Yum. That sounds great. And yeah. our, our podcast is called Farming for Health. When you hear Farming for Health, what does that mean to you? Farming for Health, I think, means it, it, it's um, number one, I know that you all have built a regenerative farm. And so you're farming in ways that create healthy, nutrient-rich vegetables uh, that help people physically become healthier. Um, and I, I see you, Amy, and what you all are doing with the wellness and well-being and mental health perspective. And you're helping people cultivate health in their lives, both through the farm, but also through all the things you teach and ways that you're doing that. So it seems very, um, very full to me. Oh, thank you. I think that's a great definition. And um, where can our listeners find you online? I'm sure they're going to want to connect with you. Yeah, we've got a website, uh, the Food Service Power Plant uh, Network. It's www.fsfranksampowerplant.com. There you'll see tools and tips. There's some downloads on what we call positive uh, mindset, mise en place, different things you can do to create a mindset of positivity. Um, all our podcasts and interviews that we've done, like with Farmer Lee came on a few weeks ago, can be found there and you can listen to the stories of different industry leaders. Fantastic. Are there any last words you want to leave our audience with today? You know, the last place probably to connect our community is on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you're welcome to go find us. There's a group. Um, I'd go to the group, the Food Service Power Plant Network. We'd welcome anyone in. It's a place where people encourage each other, support each other. People are always posting, you know, motivational quotes for them. We have industry news that goes in there, things of that nature. So we welcome anyone there and, and certainly wish everyone on their journey um, an abundance of health and well-being. Thank you so much. And you're going to be coming to Roots here at the farm in September. And we're so excited. So can't wait for that. Can't wait to hear your talk. Um, and hopefully some of our listeners can join us at Roots as well. Would love to see people there. I can't wait to visit the farm and be with y'all. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thanks, Amy. Thank you for listening to Farming for Health. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. Connect with Farmer Lee Jones and I on Instagram and Facebook.